So the first thing um, we're going to read is an article called Prophet Spirit Routes Enemies from the Temple. Big spiritual demonstration witnessed at the temple, Prophet at Detroit. And this is um, from Morris Guide National Edition, Friday, September 14th, 1928. Sunday, September 2nd, was a big day at the Grand Temple at 8140 Indiana Avenue when the spirit of the Prophet Nobu Juali was felt by all present. Although the Prophet was in Detroit, Michigan visiting, visiting one of the large temples, when some enemies of our organization came in to see what we were doing, or rather to tell us what we Moors of America should do. Of course, the Grand Sheep, Brother E, Brother Neely Bay, did everything he could to treat the gentlemen with all respect, but they did not seem to understand that they were very much out of order to interrupt or disrupt the services at the Science Temple. Just what, just what they really wanted to do could not be learned. Before they left, there was a tense moment when everyone in the temple witnessed a strange sensation. And all of a sudden, Brother J. Small Bay, Assistant Grand Sheep of the State of Illinois, shouted, The spirit of the prophet has come. The gentlemen took their departure immediately. Then there was talks by many of the brothers and sisters. They were all very powerful and filled with the spirit of the prophet. They were shouting as well as crying. Why no one seemed to know except that it was the spirit of the prophet that came to save his children from some grave danger. Brother Mealy, the chairman in charge of the meeting, now knew just what to do and how to tune in with the prophet and with Allah. It was said by one of the brothers that when one can really tune in with Allah, they can get power and move all enemies and all dangers. With love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, all things can be done. Right? So this is Moorish Guide National Edition. Newspaper went all over the country with this article. Speaking about the prophet's spirit coming into individuals and intimidating the enemies of the Moorish movement. Right? Once they now we have to recognize as well that during the time of Nobu Juali, we have this um this movement of um we'll say ministers, church people, who are trying to sway people's attention away from what Nobu Juali presented. There's if we get the um, plenty potential in the book right there. Right. Um, we heard, um, or I heard uh, um, a class, an online class, by a brother by the name of Hannibal Bay, who's um, Tashri Bay's son. And he was talking about the um, the sellouts in the Moorish movement after Nobu Juali passed, and how all the sellouts scattered into all these different organizations, groups, or whatever like that that we see today, right? So, what we did is that we put the book, or we put the information in a book form so that people have the names of these people, right? Um, there's there's court papers in here with regard to Martin Luther King and his trial, things that came out in his trial that people want to pretend you know, they're not going to listen to that and all that stuff, right? Um, um, different of these um, Christian ministers that were students of Nova Juali, 
when they were Negro Black Color, and then they got the information, jumped ship with the information, and started their own whatever, and became multimillionaires and stuff like that. This is a, this is 1930s to about 1950s, 60s. Asiatics that were doing the exact same thing that um, Creflo and T.D. Jakes and those people are doing right now. Exact same thing. Getting the people riled up, getting the people's energy up, that they're leading them to something, have people empty out all their finances to these people, and they don't get anything as far as the divine lessons of how to better themselves. The divine lessons of how to correct your character, how to manage your conduct, how to have respect for self, respect for others, all that stuff. They just had this, you know, uh, come here and, and, you know, touch and give you the spirit and stuff like that in order to, to liberate the people, right? Um, so these, these individuals um, took, took it upon themselves to side with, with the, the incoming democracy order that was, that was infiltrating the de jure government and the pawns of them to try to destabilize the Moorish movement. And what we continually want to stress to people is that the destabilization of the Moorish movement was to get the people to have civics and constitutions out their mind. And when they see Moors, it's only Muslim, Islam, Allah. And we don't want nothing to do with that because, you know, that's religion. And we're supposed to be getting out of religion if we're Asiatics coming into whatever. Yeah. So were these ministers and stuff already doing that before? Yeah, no, they were they were with Noble Juali. And then they just right now we 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 can come to the conclusion that while they were with him, they got checked by people to take certain you know what I mean posts or to to um, um, make themselves available. Useful, you know what I mean. Um, don't worry, everything that you know is gonna be paid for. All you have to do is just make yourself available. So you climb up the ladder, so that you can have say in what happens in the Moorish movement. For those individuals who um, were were very good at what they did, they just left and got funded to start their own whatever. So when we look at, um, when we look at, we use this one mainly, when we look at Nation of Islam, 1930 to, let's say, 40. Do your research Do your research on the membership. During this time, for the Nation of Islam, and ask yourself how how is it in ten years these people's membership skyrocket to the point of them being classified as number one organization or whatever like that for membership of Asiatic people when they were founded in 1930, right? Now, the background information, the Temple of Islam, or rather, Allah's Temple of Islam was what was founded in 1930. And then that was founded in Detroit. And it was, a more science temple of America that changed the name. That's why they had temple in there. Because the whole idea is to get people to think that after Nobu Juali passed, his same thing like we're talking about here, his spirit went into the other people. And his spirit went into them and now they're the head of whatever it is that they claim. Whether whether it's the Christian people, the Islamic 
the Jewish whoever was now in Novo prior to 1930, after 1930, all those people became prominent, whatever it is that, that they were claiming that they were. Right, which is in line with what, with what you were asking me earlier, right? Now, remember that all these different organizations, groups or whatever, they receive the teachings of Novo Juali. So it's not like they don't know what we're talking about, right? They're very aware of what we're talking about. They know exactly what we're talking about. They know that nation is on that nationality card early in the NOI. Not membership cards, nationality cards. And then it got changed to membership cards. Because if you say nationality, then you better be dealing with nation. But, but if they can get the people to think that it's a nation because it says nation on it, then that's how they get the weak-minded people to be down with something that, that they don't even know what they're getting themselves involved with. Because the foundation, which is 1913 to 1929, is neglected. And then this foundation is UNIA and Morris Divine and National Movement. This is why Marcus Garvey is the forerunner of the Morris Movement. This is why. Noble Juali went to visit Marcus Garvey when he was in Atlanta prison. And Garvey, Garvey has to never talk about it. This is why um, Carlos Cooks, that you have the you have the black the black guys are gonna come up in their little their little videos or whatever and you know take take their little side shots at Mars. They're gonna bring up somebody like Carlos Cooks who was who was an official head of a branch of the UNIA, but they're never going to bring up that Carlos Cooks made the African Legion wear black fezzes. As their custom, being that they're the military, but they're not going to go there. Because if they go there, then now you're making the connection that after Marcus Garvey, somebody was still carrying on the, cuts of, the customs of this unification right here right was it majority of people probably not because you know when we when we do the research nobody has any information on Carlos Cooks except one book out there so if 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 Carlos Cooks was so important to the UNIA, there should be documented stuff on him. There shouldn't be anything that's that's hidden or that you can't find. But again, anybody who is making a connection between Negro black color people and Moors or Moorish history or Moorish nationality or the history of the Moors or anything relative to Moors, anybody that is attempting to create the division probably work for the other side. More than likely. And they're not really about unity. No matter how much they say, we are for unity and all that stuff, they're not about unity. They're all about disunity. Because if they were about unity, they would see that nationality is order of the day and proclaim something. Even if it's not Moors, proclaim to be Nigerian. Proclaim to be Ghanaian. Proclaim something other than African, just blank statement, or African American, or you know, um, um, ancient whatever that they claim, right? You want to pop that that question from earlier so we could we go a little bit more into into, into that. <clears throat> 